making some banana pancakes because we had leftover overripe bananas. So Hey Wes. You grumpy? Wes, what's wrong, bud? What's wrong? You want some pancakes? Smells good. All right. Pancake one complete. What do we got there, honey? Homemade maple syrup. I brought two bottles, but we gifted one to uh, the owners. Well, the people who run the uh, campsite we stayed at in Blanc Sa Blanc. They homemade. gave us homemade jam. What was it? Uh, uh, a cloudberry. Cloudberry. I'm gonna make a lot more of these, but I. Definitely want to try this. North seems very interested. <clears throat> That's good. That's cool. Mm. Honey, what does a moose say? Good job! Yeah! 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 Okay, well here we are camped near Portland Creek, Newfoundland and uh, we are now windbound for our float plane charter. We're lucky to eat that we even got across the Strait of Belle Isle because of the winds yesterday and I'm not even sure if the ferry was able to go back again that day. And of course, when we showed up, they were thinking maybe they could fly us out yesterday, but too windy. And, and now the wind is even stronger with 90 kilometer an hour gusts. So that's what it's like in Newfoundland. Like you deal with the weather, uh, you know, and, and a lot of places, remote places, it's not time that dictates your travel, it's safety and the weather. And so Tori and I are happy to be, uh, you know, spending some time at this beautiful uh, little campground. Pretty much the only people here. And um, yeah, just taking some time to, uh, a little more time to get all our stuff dialed for our stay in this uh, cabin that's going to be deep in the mountains. Um, so we're looking really forward to that. And this is day 12 of our adventure. So we've gotten some time to familiarize ourselves with this off-grid trailer. This is the Pando 2.0 by Off Grid Trailers. And it has just been amazing for us and just given us more or less the comforts of home while we've been traveling, taking little off-road adventures to find awesome places to camp while still having a ton of outdoor time and with the entire family along too so we're just loving this thing Okay, so there are a few things I want to go over on the Pando 2.0 teardrop camper. Tori and I have been in this thing for 12 days and we've gotten pretty familiarized with it and we are loving it. So the design means that you can be connected with the outdoors like a typical camper, but it comes with a lot of off-road capability. As with all the designs that uh, Off-Grid Trailers offers, the Pando teardrop trailer sits on a laser cut C-channel engineered steel frame 
built to follow you into the backcountry, so super rugged. Pando also features a 29 degree departure angle, which is the angle between the rear tire and the back of the trailer. It makes a big deal when you're going over rocks, you're less likely to smack the back of your trailer on things. And it also has a Timbrin 3500 HD axleless uh, construction on the on the wheel, so there's no axle. Timbrin makes some of the best quality uh, suspension as well. And um, the, having no axle gives you a heck of a lot more clearance. It also comes equipped with 12 inch electric brakes. So there's trailer brakes and a battery backup breakaway system to keep you controlled and safe on the trail. So yeah, basically your brakes will still work if for whatever reason you come disconnected from, the, from your vehicle. Um, so pretty awesome. Anyways, the teardrop trailer cabin, so inside, boasts an aluminum and composite subfloor and is enclosed in an environment proof one piece aluminum skin wrap around roof featuring CNC cut rigid foam insulation and a 10 speed reversible roof fan. The climate inside your trailer remains comfortable regardless of the conditions and Tori and I have been noticing that and between the roof fan and the the propane heater you can use the two so that too much condensation doesn't build up inside and keep it nice dry and comfortable inside which is very cool. Pando also comes equipped with four USB ports and interior LED lights and includes an electrical system that features an accessible and removable wire track for easy electrical wiring access. The integrated rear galley water channel management system and wraparound aluminum rear door will let you rest easy knowing that you'll wake up to a dry kitchen for the epic morning coffee which we've been enjoying every day with some incredible views. So I want to take you in and uh, you know give you a little bit of a closer look at some of the other features this thing has. Check it out. Comes with a stove right there. The stove is plumbed directly to uh, the propane. Comes with a 10 pounder. We brought an extra 20 pounder, which we are now on, and just connect it with an extension. This receptacle to hold the propane is meant for uh, a smaller 10 pound tank. But uh, yeah, we've, we've been used it sparingly and we did top it up once, but I think we topped it up with maybe four pounds or something. So basically we're looking at uh, you know, 12 days until we switched over. This is fun. Awesome sound system back here. And the speakers are great. Well, in the country boy named Johnny B. Good. And all these doors lock. Just like that. Great fridge back here as well. Uh, another thing this has is a secondary fridge slash freezer, which is just great because again, stores a lot of food, keeps it cold, keeps it frozen. We kept salmon uh, frozen pretty much since Labrador City. Just thawed it out for uh, dinner last night. So that's been great. Uh, that slides right out and this locks it into place. So if you're hitting the trail, this is completely bolted in and locks in. It's not gonna move around, bang around in there. And this puppy here, a lot of space in there. You got your freezer in here. Got some moose sausages to eat up yeah, in there. Perfect. And the way that fridge slash freezer works is you can actually set it so the whole thing is a freezer or the whole thing is a fridge or you can set it so there's a freezer and a fridge. Amazing. Got a little more um, storage under here but also that's one of two water tanks. Second water tank is down below which is reinforced with this skid plate here and the sink just drains right onto the ground so we just bring a collapsible bucket for gray water little thing here to hold your soap sink oh, here folds down there's actually a thing that sits on top of the sink as well so you can store stuff in there and this here is right where your water heater system is here the gas comes in here that feeds the stove directly so you don't need to unhook the tank and, and hook it into the stove it's just really good to go and then uh, yeah your pump here your light here because this is also a shower and this is your water heater you don't wait for the water to heat up you crank this up it lights it and it pretty much heats your water up right away which is a super cool system it heats it just using the propane gas um, and then this comes out here like that 
You wash off your boys, whatever. So yeah, that's your that's your water system in there. You have another uh, awning right here that folds down and uh, you can have privacy. So you can have a nice enclosed shower, which is pretty cool too. Maybe for a little warmer times of year, but uh, you know, or if you're just really in need of a shower, you can brave the, the chillier temperatures, but that water comes out nice and warm. The propane on top of running the hot water, of course, runs the heater inside, also uses the batteries, and there's a top vent as well. So what you do is you set the top vent at the heat and the heater so they both work together, and that way you don't get condensation in there because like in anything, if you're inside with the heater running, you know, just your breath and all that is gonna create a lot of condensation on the walls. So this you can set up to be nice and warm and you can set the thermostat on the vent so when the vent will run and it'll draw that condensation out and then the heater will kick in after the vent turns off and keep it warm as well. So you can have a nice dry environment in there as well if you set the heater and the top fan properly. Also the top fan can blow in so you can set it to go either ways if you want to cool down and just have uh, get some air in there too. So we've been finding that really good just for it to get a nice comfortable dry sleep and of course this thing is you know gets you completely out of the elements too. So really awesome little sleeping setup too on a queen size bed. Sleeps our entire family with the two little kids so pretty cool. Uh, and now I'm going to show you a little bit more of inside the trailer as well. We got uh, the heater switch here heat comes out of here tons of storage amazing amount of storage inside here uh, you got these little shelves here they pop up like this look at that pretty sweet fan at the top that makes a big difference we even got a TV in there check that out got our sleeping bags and everything in there but that's a queen size bed it folds up to a couch too pretty sweet little living space in there and then up here the Pando 2.0 doesn't come with a, a standard with a rooftop tent so we just actually added our own rooftop tent onto this and that folds out and it's just great so that's an option because it has a really strong roof rack and then that's our rooftop tent, roof racks on the top. This is a full awning and it comes out in such a way that you don't actually need to guide down the ground. Actually, you can just pull it out like that, it'll work, but there's also legs that go in and you just kind of tie it back on either side. Um, so super easy set up and pack down. When it's raining, you don't need to bungle the tarps. You get this out, you get out of the rain quickly. So that's a really great option is to have uh, this awning with walls that zip onto it because it's just another additional great shelter option so you can have more area that's out of the wind and weather keep you warm great for the kids and all that we've uh we zipped on the uh, uh walls only once when it was really windy and raining but we thought that was super cool actually we are thinking that uh, to put a wood stove jack in the roof of that or in one of the side walls so you can actually run a wood stove in there would be something pretty cool for uh, super late or early season trips. Off-roading world, full-size spare, heavy-duty drop-down wheel. And uh, one thing I really like is this extra custom-made uh, roof rack system on top of the front box, which has been really helpful. And in here we got our whole system, inverter, bring a generator with us um, in case we're traveling not a long distance day after day. It's nice to bring a generator because these batteries will charge off the trickle charger from the truck itself as you drive. But if you're not driving as far, they might not get enough time to charge. So we brought a generator and that will uh, help us charge the batteries if we're going to stay put and we don't actually have a uh, site where we can plug in, which this whole trip we've stayed, this is one of uh, two sites where we stayed where we actually have access to power and services like that. But a lot more storage space in here as well. We brought uh, just a, a jumper pack and air compressor as well. Yeah, we got a siphon, we got, uh, we got chains, we got uh, jumper cable, come along, booster pack, generator we don't need a generator that's super powerful because we're just using it to charge the batteries a couple outlets here too which is quite convenient two really good batteries full tire plug kit even brought a little soap and a little basin so we can find where that plug is easily and uh, a can of uh, puncture seal too which will 
get you out of a bind. Simple, simple to use system, just one switch right there. Here, if you do come to a site where you have power and you don't want to run it off your batteries, you just plug it right on in like that. That'll charge the unit and run everything you need to run. So now that I've become more familiarized with this truck we've been driving, um, this is day 12 of our adventure, and I showed you this trailer we're hauling with it. I want to give you a little bit of a run through on this awesome, awesome truck. Let's check it out. Behind me is the Chevy Silverado ZR2, and this is quite possibly the most capable off-roading full-size pickup truck that's ever been sold in North America and this thing is just awesome. It's got a 6.2 liter V8 of 420 horsepower and 460 pounds of torque 10 speed automatic transmission with electronic transmission range selector which helps in a lot of ways including on gas It's a Silverado first application of the Multimatic DSSV dampers, off-road cut front bumper that enables an improved 31 degree approach angle. And that's the, the, the distance between basically the front bumper and the wheel. So that really helps you get over things in off-roading scenarios. New steel front and rear bumpers designed for off-road strength durability and clearance, enhanced two-speed transfer case with terrain mode, and terrain mode is something pretty special in and of itself, 33-inch Goodyear Wrangler Territory mud terrain tires, which are pretty sweet, large underbody aluminum skid plates can help provide additional off-road protection from the elements, hidden dual outlet exhaust, this is the uh, LED by the headlamp, these puppies are super nice to have. Very likely the best full-size pickup for overlanding, you know, in a half ton for sure, and probably the best just off-road capable uh, full-size pickup ever sold in North America. What a beauty. Exclusive ZR2 interior features and standard 13.4 inch touch screen inside and a 12.3 inch diagonal driver information center. So this thing's super capable on the off-road, but it's gonna be a comfy ride to get you to where you're gonna be doing your off-roading and overlanding. Through the mirror, goes from a regular mirror, see me with my camera there, to digital, which gives you a much better view at the back when you're towing. That's something I've never seen before. One of the things this vehicle has is terrain mode, which is pretty cool. And terrain mode adjusts your vehicle's shift mapping and traction control and adds automatic braking to maximize performance in varying road or surface conditions. So basically it almost uses the pedal to brake and you can crawl over rocks and stuff like that with it, which is a pretty cool feature. Um, I haven't had to use it here, but I have used it in uh, other off-roading vehicles and it's almost like the vehicle just does the work for you. Pretty cool. Lots of room for the kiddos. Hey Wes. Wes is getting fed in the truck because it's so windy outside. Hey bud. Hey bud. How you doing? Now Tori and I and the kids haven't been putting this vehicle even remotely into what it can manage, but man, it sure makes me feel safe um, when we're heading off the, you know, the paved road and we're getting into some areas where we don't know what we might encounter. Might be a tight turnaround, uh, might be some boulders we have to go over and this thing just handles them no problem. All kinds of comforts inside, super capable. The list is quite long of all the capabilities and all the bells and whistles this thing has from just an off-roading standpoint. So, you know, for example, front and rear locking differential. It has an all-wheel drive setting and that's a true front and rear locker, you know, which is something that only the high end of off-roading trucks have. It has a four wheel high, four wheel low. It's got a rear wheel drive setting and it's also got an intelligent all wheel drive setting as well, which is great. So it's really got everything you're gonna need, towing, off-roading, you know, winter conditions, mud, rock, whatever, you name it. Pretty cool vehicle.